Today we're going back to Elite Dangerous, specifically discussing a feature that for me takes it from being great to bloody mesmerising. I'm talking of course about its VR mode, which is nothing short of mind blowing. So it proper baffles me then how Frontier Developments has left this gem to rot in dark space. Arguably it's the best VR experience money can buy and trust me, I've played every VR game under the sun from Half-Life Alex to Microsoft Flight Simulator and all that shovelware crap that Zuckerberg will throw down your throat. So what makes Elite Dangerous a VR masterpiece and why has Frontier abandoned it? Well grab a cuppa, sit tight and let me break it down in today's video. For you lucky sods who've had the pleasure of playing Elite in VR mode, you can probably skip ahead to the second half of the video, but for the curious lot of those who've never touched Elite Dangerous, let me explain why its VR mode is simply mind-blowing. First off, VR transforms those everyday, mundane tasks you do hundreds of times into something exhilarating and stress-inducing. Take landing your ship for example, sure you can use the automated system like a pussy where you hit a button and Bob's your uncle fannies your aunt, your ship is safe on the ground but manual landing, that takes practice and adds a heap of immersion to Elite. In VR though, this becomes a proper rewarding gameplay aspect. You're looking left and right to make sure nothing's in your way, checking the screen below for alignment, or whilst admiring the towering landscape or starport around you. What you find is that your head is physically moving left and right, up and down, which is a far cry from the normal way of playing, where you're as rigid as a mannequin. Speaking of starports, they might feel repetitive, in 2D mode as you go through them over and over like you have space dementia but in VR it's a whole new ball game. As the starport rotates and your ship comes in you almost feel drunk as a skunk manoeuvring your vessel slowly navigating through the gates and finding your landing pad. So many times I've found myself physically leaning into the cockpit window to get a better view or arching my back to see over the cockpit just that little bit easier. And the grandeur of what's around you especially as ships take off and land in their pads is just a brilliant example of how immersive VR can be. It's like stepping into a strip club for the first time where you just sit and admire the world around you with that big smile just etched forever on your face. But let's go even more basic here. Even just looking at the four quadrants of screens inside your ship is a game changer. These are the screens that give you info like navigation data or ship stats. In the 2D world it feels a bit Ron Jeremy stiff like your character's neck is snapping perfectly to read each screen which of course makes sense for the 2D world, but it's worth mentioning here. I play Elite with Toby Eye Tracker 5, which definitely amps up the immersion with the screen info, but in VR, it feels so natural. The best way to explain it, you genuinely feel like a commander. The ship responds to you naturally, recognizing your head turns and automatically brings up the info you need. It's a small yet massive part of making you feel like someone who is controlling this high-tech piece of machinery. It also means your focus is less on the controls and more on the views outside your window. Now let's talk ship interiors. The community's been gagging for them, but it ain't likely to happen anytime soon. But in VR, you get a sense, especially in the cockpit, of just how massive your ship is. My missus would proudly tell me size really does matter, as if to rub it in my face further. But when it comes to Elite VR, she may very well have a point. You see, you can do a full 180 and look behind you and see the grandeur of your ship cockpit. Me and Johnny Two Shoes love riding about in our Imperial Cutter, one of the end game ships. And what blew me away as I moved up through the ships is our VR mode made me genuinely appreciate their sheer size and detail. I absolutely love how they all look and feel. VR makes you want to collect every single vessel because even the shittier ones the community avoids still has a charm in VR that the 2D versions just can't convey. It's like stepping into a luxury motor. You appreciate every stitch, every curve, every shiny bit of metal. VR brings out the true beauty and scale of these beasts, making you feel like a proper spacefaring gangster. However, there are two everyday tasks that, for me, turn this into a horror game for all the right reasons, I hasten to add. When you're fuel scooping next to a star, 
the main way to refill your space tank so you can keep on trucking is normally a boring affair, a mundane task where you just pull up and park the bus. But in VR mode, it's both majestic and horrifying as the scale of that star towers over your ship and you slowly see that heat build up on your info bar. Controlling your ship to get that angle just right suddenly makes you feel like a master Jedi. You gently sweep up the space fuel, keeping that balance of heat and cold just right. It's here then that I realised in VR mode, everything from landing your ship, scooping up fuel, to simply navigating your systems, they feel so much slower and more deliberate. Everything you do is done with purpose because in VR, you feel so much more responsible and need to concentrate harder to ensure you don't end up dead as a dodo. And nothing makes this more apparent than the granddaddy of fear, the neutron star. For those new to Elite, those collapsed stars act as beacons, giving you a boost for your next jump, saving both fuel and time. They're super useful for covering vast distances, but they're bloody terrifying even in 2D mode. When your ships jump into a neutron star, you never quite know what's coming up before you. Hand on the throttle, ready for an emergency manoeuvre, because if you get too close to these beasts, they'll devour your ship, and depending on how how well kitted out you are, that could cost you an arm and a leg to replace. The trick is to approach slowly, aim for the wisps of blue nectar that emanate from the tips. Your ship takes on fuel like a five-year-old eating candy for the first time while she wrestled to keep it away from the neutron core. It buzzes with excitement and with nothing but the emptiness of space around you, it's one of the most exciting and frightening things I've ever come across in VR. And yes, that includes games like Phasmophobia. We're back to that word again, scale. The sheer power and size of these neutron stars take on a whole new meaning in VR, something that's hard to explain until you experience it for yourself. And so far I've been banging on about how the everyday tasks in Elite Dangerous are elevated to new heights and create a brand new love affair with its game mechanics. But what I haven't touched upon yet is the sheer beauty of space and how that is transformed in VR mode. Now another space game worth mentioning here is of course No Man's Sky. Sure, it's fun in VR, but it still feels like you're playing a game. And what I mean by that is, even though you're in space and traversing the galaxy, everything still feels a bit small. Yeah, 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 that's what she said. And from the ships that you control to the planets you explore, it all feels a bit too quick and easy as you zip off from the ground to the atmosphere to deep space. Now, I ain't saying it's bad, but it lacks that scale, that grandiose visual that Elite has in spades. In Elite Dangerous, everything feels monumental. You feel the vastness, infinite stretches of space out before you. It's like standing on the edge of a skyscraper looking down. It's that sense of awe and a bit of fear as your vertigo kicks in. Elite gives you that and in VR it's like you're truly there, lost in the cosmos and it's one of those rare experiences where you feel so insignificant to the world outside your cockpit window. It's that vulnerability that only VR could bring which makes it so captivating. Planets and stars are a perfect example of elite scale and whilst I did a Harvey Weinstein earlier and touched upon the stars, it's the planetary systems that are truly incredible. We're talking life size here. Entering a planet's atmosphere is a stunning visual wonder. That initial entry point just below the orbit line when the gravitational pull takes effect makes you appreciate the sheer size. Yeah, yeah that's what she said. In VR mode of course, what you don't see on screen is how grand it all feels. As you get closer to the surface, you start to see rock forms formations, then big hulking mountains, and then you go through the whole landing procedure again, navigating the planetary surface. It's honestly the most incredible feeling. I could look up the thesaurus to try and put it into words, but the video and my words today, they won't do it justice until you experience it first hand. Now one of the most beautiful parts of Elite is when you hop in to your little SRV. That's your space buggy for the newbies. You get to drive about the planet like a drunk driver, and those mountain dunes and craters in VR they feel epic, like a grand tour road trip that Jeremy Clarkson and his mates would try and tackle for sheer banter. And as you reach a peak, sometimes the best thing to do is simply stop and stare. You could spend hours just observing the planets and watch as the local star orbits above you, or as the pitch black 
blankets over you and the sunrise crests over the horizon. I never truly admired or took part in this aspect until I played in VR. And quick note on sound, in Elite it's epic and the sound design has been a standout feature. In VR though, it's the responsiveness of the directional sound that adds so much weight to the immersion. This is particularly apparent in space combat where laser fire and explosions whistle past your ears, giving you insight into where an enemy asshole is coming from. Speaking of space battles, they're super impressive of course in VR, but they still don't hold a candle to the beauty and magnitude of the environments that you come across throughout the galaxy. The issue with space battles is that, for me, it's highly dependent on your ship. The cockpit glass might be too small to see what's truly around you, and you can feel, weirdly, a bit constrained. It's not as impressive as, say, a dogfight in DCS in VR mode, where the adrenaline levels are right through the roof. And don't get me wrong, when I planned this video, I knew combat would be what most people would think is great in VR but I wanted to show that it's quite the opposite here and not where the wow factor takes place. And what makes all this so bloody good is how well optimised the game runs. Don't get me wrong, to have all the bells and whistles you need a decent setup, but the entry to VR here is more than workable on most entry level cards. Whilst I'm playing this on a 4090 these days, I've played Elite on a 3070 without any hiccups at all. Let's have a natter then quickly about the headsets whilst we're here. I've played this on the Rift 2, the Quest 2, the Reverb G2 and now the Quest 3. Visually, the best headset for me out of those for was the G2 Reverb, mainly because the blacks look proper black, and for a game where black is everywhere, the colours really do pop. The issue with the Reverb 2, apart from being tethered to your PC like a dog, is that it's got a sweet spot, and anything out of that can look a little blurry. This is why for me, the MetaQuest 3 is the go-to. I can now play wirelessly and the resolution and pancake lenses give me a great field of view. Sure, the colours ain't quite there on the black levels, but it's a trade-off that I'd recommend. Also, keep your eyes peeled on Facebook Marketplace for a cheap Quest 2, which can go for as little as $100 in some cases. So get your credit cards ready, boys. So if you can't tell, I'm hard as nows for Elite VR. I've ploughed hundreds into VR games over the years, and I can see why the likes of Half-Life Alex stand out. I get how Microsoft Flight Sim is sheer beauty, or how fun a game like American Truck Simulator is, but I stand by everything in this video and truly believe that Elite Dangerous is the single best VR experience money can buy, even after all these years since its release. So why, in all that's God's holy earth, a frontier gone and taken a massive dump on the VR community. It's like they had gold in their hands and decided to chuck it down the shitter. It makes you want to cry into your pint because even with its brilliance, it could still be so much more. They've got this masterpiece of a game, the best VR experience out there, and they've just left it there to rot away. First up, let's talk about some VR issues, which are understandable to some extent, but should have been fixed by now. Elite wasn't initially made with VR in mind, so I get it, but my criticisms, they still stand. At its core, Elite is a game about exploration, traversing systems, and getting to grips with all the different factions, Thargoid attacks, and so on. The map systems and how you plot your routes can be quite detailed, and even in 2D mode, it can be a right pain in the ass to navigate. In VR mode, it's far more difficult, as it hasn't been redesigned with your headset in mind. Honestly, it's easier just to whip off the bloody thing and use your screen to get the details moving, but that's where the immersion gets shot to bits. If they redesigned this a bit, made it less cluttered, and perhaps allowed you to Use your VR controllers to input data on a cockpit virtual keyboard, keep it in line with the look and feel of your ship, of course, it would go a long, long way. Truth be told, that would require a bit of work, and I don't necessarily call this out as a negative, but rather an example of how Frontier implemented VR and then sort of just left it there without thinking about the more admin-focused aspects of what Elite requires. It's like building a top-notch pub but forgetting to stock it with the beer. The basics are there, but it just ain't quite right. The next part is a proper lack of understanding of what Elite has become. There are some essential websites and an API that are all too necessary when playing this game and grinding out your engineering. For example, a website like Inara lets you look up key things like where the closest resources are to your current location. It's a feature that should have been in the base game anyway, and I'll bet my virginity that even the devs use these fan-made tools. Remember, it's their implementation of the constant grind that has forced the community to go down this path 
path. So rather than fight it, I say embrace it. In Elite Dangerous, you'll want to browse the web and not just to watch space porn. That's just par for the course in a game like this. But there's no web viewer or mod that allows such a thing. If there was, we could easily use it to traverse the galaxy and look up some much needed details. Now, Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't have this feature built into the base game either, but it does allow for moddable files and many modded aircraft have a flip window for this very thing. There needs to be an understanding that in a game like Elite VR, you need to look up certain things online, yet you're forced to remove the headset once more to do so. It's like being in the middle of a bank job and having to stop to ask for directions. It breaks the immersion, right? Frontier, if you're listening, give us what we need to stay fully in the game without having to faff about. Just to make this clear, I'm really talking about the quality of life improvements, small things that would make a big difference in how you play because under no circumstances do you really want to take off your VR headset. However, a whole video showcasing Elite VR's brilliance and complaining about a lack of quality life improvements ain't really showing why Frontier are total muppets. And so I present to you Exhibit A, the biggest part of spaceship, also known as Odyssey. Ah yes, Odyssey, how you have ruined my love affair. Here was a DLC that introduced a first-person mode and should have ushered in a whole new era in the space sim extravaganza. No longer could Star Citizen or No Man's Sky claim to hold this over elite because here we could exit our ships on the planet and wander the horizons, admiring the utopic views. Here we had first-person battles where bullets would whistle past your earlobes and you'd be legging it back to your ship in a last-ditch attempt for extraction. Oh, what could have been? been but alas what we got was mutton dressed as dog shit covered in piss and by the way i ain't even talking vr yet god no this was just its normal release a hollow first person grind fest with rigid animations poor gunplay and frankly the square root of f all to complete in the repetitive missions it also messed up the procedurally generated landscapes that gave so much intrigue to the planets as if designed by karl marx himself the theory of how good this should have been did not hold up to the reality of what it actually became. Instead of a groundbreaking addition, we got a bloody mess, a proper kick in the bollocks for all of us who had high hopes. But the biggest kick in the knackers was only realised when playing in VR. The second you walked out into the wilderness, you were transported to a flat screen in an empty environment. Yes, they couldn't even be asked to give you a space-themed background for your flat 2D window in the 3D VR world. And to make matters worse, you couldn't even adjust the screen to make it more immersive. Want to make it a little bigger so it feels more like a cinema screen? Go f*** yourself. Want a proper VR mode? Even if it meant compromising and using only a mouse and keyboard? Well, go f*** yourself. How about a future promise that VR would be implemented in Odyssey properly, but it would take developers a few months? Once more, go f*** yourself. In one fell swoop, they absolutely destroyed everything that made VR so damn brilliant, so damn beautiful, and so damn immersive. It was like they took all the best parts of Elite VR and tossed them out in the airlock. The immersion, the grandeur, the sheer thrill of being in space, all gone. Instead, we got a half ass flat screen mess that left us all feeling like proper twats. And so now you're left in a proper quandary. Do you play Elite in VR mode and put up with the immersion breaking Odyssey, a big focus of the game? Or do you skip it entirely, missing out on the beauty of the galaxy, even with its piss poor missions and combat? Or do you give up VR entirely and only play the 2D mode? Or worse still, perhaps you never come back to Elite at all. I can't deny that I've fallen into that latter camp of late, picking up Elite less and less, because once you experience the thrill of VR, it's very difficult to play it in any other way. And perhaps player numbers are the key in all of this. At any given time, Elite Dangerous has around two to 4,000 players. How many of those are VR players, though? I suspect it's just a fraction, knowing that PC VR gaming by nature is still a niche within a niche. Perhaps then the investment, the resources, and the time it would take to get VR up to scratch is simply not worth the return that Frontier would get in their bank accounts. I think sadly it's now gone too far to see a U-turn, but I also believe if they developed the VR in line from the beginning, we could have seen a less churn of players where the likes of me would still be devoting days per year to exploring the galaxy. Elite Dangerous VR then is 
one of the saddest VR stories that I can remember, and that's only because of just how incredible it is. For many of you who never played this space sim, Elite Dangerous might look a bit stagnant, perhaps a bit stale, maybe even a bit too complicated for you newcomers. And you know what? I won't deny it as its learning curve and that it's not perfect by any stretch, but donning a VR headset is unlike anything you've ever experienced, from scary looking neutron stars to incredible vistas over isolated planets. And all along, Frontier had no idea just what they had created. They had no idea what Elite could have become. Sadly then, Elite Dangerous VR is very much lost in space where even the fuel rats couldn't rescue its sorry ass. Until next time, my lovelies, Reggie out.